Hey internet, Jack Danger here of Deadflip. I just wanted to give you a quick and dirty rundown on how to hit the ground running, creating your own table in Visual Pinball. It's um, pretty intimidating when you first open the editor here, but I'm gonna give you just an idea of what everything does and how you can quickly make a game, shoot it, and just sort of feel out how your design is gonna play. So what you're looking at here is a brand new file. Um, all you have to do is go to File, New. This is the blank table or you can go to the example table, which you'll see here, and there's a lot more stuff going on. So if we switch back over to the blank table we had, if we hit play, play up in the top left hand corner, sort of renders the game, makes it playable right off the bat without having to do anything. You can hold down enter, shift buttons, flipping, and then you have a game, all right? And you can vary like how the plunge goes. But you'll notice on the left and right hand sides here, these are all the things that you would typically see in a pinball machine. So these are the various caps from pops, uh, all the various posts that you would find in a game, some rulers to help you measure out exactly what's going on there. Uh, these look like some kickback arms, various flippers from over the years. Um, the blank table has this, you know, sort of like old EM style layout and we'll get into how to change that. If we go over to the example table and play that, it's the same layout, but they added a bunch of the components on here so you can actually play sort of everything. And this is a great place to find how to make stuff work. So you'll see when you shoot the ball, when it goes through a lane, it lights up that light. The pop bumpers are all popping. Um, if you knock down a drop, it lights a light and then the drop comes back up. You know, so there's a timer there. All these have lights associated with it. The spinner even has a sound attached to it, which I don't think is actually showing up right now. Um, but I do suggest opening up the example table once you get to the scripting part of things. Yes, this looks intimidating, but it's not as bad as it seems, especially if you understand just the basics of if then else statements. But again, we'll go into that. So into the blank table, let me go over a few things. So if you want to select something, you could just click it, bump. See, we clicked it. This is a one-way gate. You can make it a two-way gate. Everything that you click will have some settings here on the right. I believe this is a wall. You can see there's a whole bunch of settings going on. So let's just go down the line and show you what's going on here. Um, on the left, you'll see the very first thing is called wall. So you click that, you place it wherever you want. Now you have this wall and it has a bunch of settings on the right, but let's just render this to show you what that did. So by default, it made a 50 units high block that the ball will interact with. So you see how it's sort of getting stuck up top there. Um, what do you do with this? Well, you can grab these corners and you can make the shape whatever the heck you want. And if you right click somewhere, you can add a point and now you've got, you know, this weird shape that would never exist on a real pinball machine. Um, you can see everything's very angular, but if you wanted this to be sort of like a smooth slope, you can right click on a point and click smooth. And look at that. Zoop. Now if a ball hit this, it would roll down and, you know, do, do whatever the heck you wanted it to do. Keep adding points. You know, you could smooth them out if you want. Another option on here also is if you right click on a point other than smooth is slingshot and what it will do is it will bold one of the lines okay what this means is when a ball hits this instead of just thudding off of this material it will actually sling back as if it were a slingshot um, I will show you here so we got the slope the ball will zoop you know that's good but also you see how that's slinging the ball back instead of just thudding it's actually a powerful sling back at you. So pretty cool. You could do some pretty awesome stuff with walls. A lot of people like to build their orbits and stuff out of this. Um, my favorite thing to do to build or okay, let's one thing at a time, Jeff, one thing at a time. So we could build like a little pathway here, get rid of this little stopper. Now when we shoot the ball, it's going to ride that little path and come down and probably go straight into the drain. Come around. And, you know, perfect. And it'll ride the top of that if you want. So you're noticing that I'm able to throw this ball wherever I want. All right. And this is a setting that you'll want to turn on inside of preferences. 
I believe it's editor UI options. Turn throw always on. What this does is whenever you click somewhere, you get to put the ball right where it's at and then test shots instead of trying to shoot something, you can actually just put the ball there. And you can give the ball some velocity. So if I wanted to simulate throwing a ball up here instead of trying to shoot that, if you click and drag and release, it will give that ball some power. If you click further down, the distance between where you started to click and where you let go increases the velocity of that ball. So, you know, we can go boop, little tiny throw or big throw. Cool. So that's walls. Um, you can assign images to them. So if we wanted the top to be like aluminum and we wanted it to feel like it was metal, uh, the top and the sides have different materials and textures that you can assign so this will have like a metal look to the top but it'll still be pink by default on the sides uh, this is great for when you like are done with your feel and you want to like export this and like create some plastics and draw art on there and stuff like that you can adjust the heights of this so right now it's bottom height zero top height 50. so if for some reason we wanted a wall that was like stacked on here because you could get the ball up there somehow. So if I wanted, if this wall is zero to 50 and I wanted this wall to be on top of that, that means the bottom height would have to be, you guessed it, 50. And then uh, we'll say it's also 50 tall. So this would have to be hundred. So now we're going to see that shape on top of there. And the ball can actually roll on top of surfaces as well. So, you know, we essentially created a little upper play field area that the ball could roll around on. We could put a flipper, some targets up here. Pretty easy peasy. Let's get into, so that's walls. Walls are fun, walls are great. Uh, gate is the next thing that's up. Click, put a gate somewhere. You'll see it's a, a circle, line going through it, two arrows facing either direction. What this is telling you is the ball can go through this gate left or right. Um, this is great if you wanted it to be a switch. Uh, but typically you would want a gate to not be a two-way, you'd want it to be a one-way so that it can pass through this way, but it can't go back this way. So that is exactly what this gate's doing. It's not letting the ball back into the shooter lane. And you can increase the size of this all you want. Um, you can adjust the rotation over here. All these settings tell you like how tall it is, how long it is. So, you know, this would be a super long gate, you know, an elongated gate. Got it. Uh, rotation, you know, you do it. 40 you know so the ball could roll along the top of this but it can enter through the bottom gates are pretty straightforward that's how you put those in and uh yeah let's move on from that <laughs> that's your gates now ramps super easy it is wild how easy it is you just click ramp click where you want the ramp here's the entrance of the ramp here's the exit of the ramp okay so right now, this ramp is uh, 50 high, which means it exits at 50 units. So if we wanted this ramp to sort of put the ball on top of this 50 unit high wall we have here, well, this would have to be 50 units, but you have to keep in mind that it's not 50 going all the way down. So this would either have to be a little higher than the wall, or it has to line up exactly. Now you'll see there's only two points here. Well, we can right click anywhere and put a little curve on it. See that? Pretty cool. And then you can line it up. So shooting this will put the ball right on top of there and then it'll fall off. Uh, you can make this as tall as you want from the bottom to the top. Uh, walls are very important. So visible wall, let me just render this really quick. Visible wall is the wall you see, but it is just an illusion because it's not the wall that the ball interacts with. So you see how it's like going up that ramp, zoop, and it was rolling on top of there, pretty cool. So 30 is the wall height that you see. This could literally be zero, zero, and it would look like the ball should fall off, but it's the physical wall that's holding the ball on. So the physical wall is actually double, it looks like, the, the size. So like if this ramp's really close and you just rocket a ball at that, it's not gonna go flying off, it's gonna stay on there. So you can adjust these sizes all you want. You can adjust these sizes all you want. Um, top height, top width. So let's say the bottom width of this ramp isn't enough. You know, we can go like 150. So now it's a super thick ramp at the bottom that sort of 
funnels out at the top. And then we can just shoot that and the ball goes in there. See? Ba-boom. Excellent. Again, you can give this an image and a material. You can make it metal if you want it. It'll put a cool sheen on it. Um, you don't really have to worry about the rest of the stuff. Uh, top height, top, bottom height, top width, bottom width. Um, a one cool trick I will show you with ramps is if I need a ball guide to be sort of like in the middle of a game, I actually use ramps instead of walls because I feel like I can get more action out of them. This is a quick little hack. So for both of your heights, make them zero. Your width, make it two. Okay. Now, what do you have? You have this little stick. But what's cool is if you add a point, you can put these bends in it. And because the height is zero, zero, this thing is just this cool wall that is chilling on the ground that's real easy to move, it's real malleable, it's uh, it's just pretty chill. I love using ramps sort of the way you're not supposed to, but this is great if you just needed like a quick little horseshoe. You know, you could just build them out of these. Walls are great, but you know, I, li I like hacking it with the ramps. Um, flipper will come back to bumper. This is a pop bumper. This couldn't be any simpler. Click, put a pop bumper. Boom. You, you now have a pop bumper and it works and it's ready to go. It's actually that simple. And if you want to, you can copy paste it. Um, now if you copy paste, if you control C and then you immediately paste, it'll paste directly on top of where that was, or you can hold shift and paste and it'll paste where your mouse was currently sitting so we have all these pops here and as i mentioned they immediately are active so we can just throw a ball right in here and they'll just start doinking around boom look at this we've already got the most disgusting looking pinball machine designed and we got this little slingshot here uh, much like everything else it has its own parameters you can change the cap material uh, base material skirt material ring material um yeah what's interesting though is the way pops work if i wanted this pop on top of this 50 unit high wall i would have to select what this wall's name is so currently this wall's called wall 001 so i can collect this pop surface wall 001 now when we play that pop bumper is going to be on our little faux upper play field boom awesome and then it can bounce around up on top of there easy peasy that's also how we'll put uh flippers and stuff up there okay plunger don't worry about spinner pff, you have to have a million of these or i don't like you so spinner click it there's your spinner actually that easy <laughs> and much like the pop bumper if you wanted a spinner sort of up top here you would just select the surface which is wall zero zero one now it's going to be up top you can change the rotation of it you could change uh how long it is so if it's like a super long spinner and then if you hit play you will have the spinners up top see big boy down there and the bracket you could turn on and off but spinners again are ready to go now what's cool about this is these all have hit functions so whether or not you told it to do something this game's registering that that's spinning and you can associate that with something that happens in the code like turn a light on or uh you know activate something um, we'll get into the code of that in just a second timers we're not going to really worry about triggers are your switches your rollover switches so by default this is a rollover this line right here is the rollover switch but if you let's see copy this there's different kinds of rollovers. There's even star rollovers. Ooh, everyone loves star rollovers. And you'll see that these are currently like in the in lanes here. Um, they, they did a lot to try to help you with the, the Italian bottom feel. So you could just stay up here and design what you want. But again, you associate what surface this is gonna be on. So if we wanted this on the upper play field here, we could change it or by default it's down below. Um, wire thickness, rotation, you're going to have to make sure your rotation is right, like if you wanted it up here, because the ball can't hit the side of a rollover like that. Um, kickers are pretty cool. Put a kicker in there, and by default, again, this program's trying to help you out as much as possible. So there's the hole. The ball falls in there. 
Now it's just waiting for a command to do something with it. Is it gonna kick it out? What direction is it gonna kick it out? How hard is it gonna kick it out? Uh, does it hold it and fire another ball into the shooter lane so that you could start a multi-ball? Now what's cool about that is on the example table, they've done that for you. So you can go in and sort of like peek at the code to know how to do this, but you see how there's a saucer right here? It will hold the ball, kick another ball into play, and then once you get that in there, you now have a multi-ball. So this example table has a lot of great stuff in it to help you get started with just some of the basics of coding, um, especially like switches turning lights on, et cetera, et cetera. Targets, obviously you're gonna have a million of these. Your first click automatically puts a drop target down. And again, the drop target will work as intended. It will be up, when you hit it, it will fall. But there's several different targets in here that you could choose from like, uh, like old, like I don't even know how old, uh, is that like an old Gottlieb, super slim but thick target. You got your standard round targets. Um, let's, let's paste a couple of these in here so you can see what's going on. So it's round, rectangle, uh, let's see, copy pasta. So you can click on something, but if you want multiples, just drag a little lasso around it and you can move it around. This one could be, uh, we'll make this the drop so you can actually see it happen. Do, 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 drop target, simple, boom. All right, let's hit start or play. Waiting for it to go. All right, hit it, see the drop goes down and the targets react as they should. Uh, the reason everything's pink, pink is sort of the default color. It's saying like this item's here, it's ready to go, but there are no textures or materials associated with it. So you see we got the, the rollover here, we got the star rollover this control gate all right so that's targets next we've got lights now lights are pretty cool um, it will by default just make a round circle cool uh, over here are all sorts of fun light settings that you're just gonna have to play with to feel it out or find an example table where you know what looks good and then you use that uh, color you know you choose Make, make it red, um, you could choose if it's like a bulb, if it's an image, the surface that it's on, the state that it defaults to, and the example table again does a really good job of giving you something to mess with here. That's what all these little red circles are. So here's one, fall off 20, fall off power two, it's gonna be red, um, get in here. And you can see the light up top right there. And then when you roll over it, it lights up. Now you need to tell this light to light up with a with an event. So for instance, we'll take this light. It's called light 001. Okay, awesome. Very original. Then we'll take this target and we say we want this target to light this light. All right? This is called target 00. Screw this. We'll take target 001 just so it's not confusing. So we'll go into script here, and I've already put like a quick little thing in here, but just copy pasta some code off of the example table. And so our target is called 001, okay? And this is saying 001 hit event. If, and the light was called light 001, light 001, light 001, okay. Here's what this is saying. The saying is, target is hit. If the light is on, then turn it off. Else, turn it on. Right? So that's that's all this is doing. That's all it needs to do. We're gonna hit play. The light should be off. And then when we hit it with a ball, it turns on. And when we hit it with a ball, it turns off. That's the power of if, if then else statements. If it's doing this, then do this else do the other thing. So pretty straightforward. If you had like a whole bank of targets, a whole bank of lights, just make sure everything's labeled and named appropriately. Um, and everything has a hit event. So this spinner, for instance, we could say, uh, let's see, what is this spinner called? It's called spinner 001, copy. So we could say, instead of target hit, we could say spinner spin. All right, okay, that is called a syntax error. 
spin. So now that that's in there, for every spin that this goes through, this light is gonna turn on and off. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. Pretty cool. You can do a pop bumpers with hits, spinners with spins, targets with hits. Obviously we turned that off. Um, anything that has like a hit event, you can make it interact with something else. Pretty chill. Is there anything else? I mean, I think that's pretty much all you need to really start making a game is like lay out your shots, put targets in front of things that you think would be fun things to shoot. You can grab posts with rubbers on them. So this is like a mini post with a rubber around it. That is a, these are lights. So you can copy this and then say, you know, to protect this edge, I wanna put this mini post with a rubber. So select this. Put it right there so the ball isn't going to just smash that corner and get destroyed a great way to stay organized in visual pinball is layers right here so you'll see there's number one number two number three number four number five you can turn all these things off so what a lot of people will do is they'll put you know all their ramps on one layer so you know i want my ramps to be on layer six okay so if I know my ramp is good and I don't want to see it because I'm trying to work on other stuff, you could turn six off. The ramp disappears in your editor, but it is still there. Even if all this is off, even if the whole thing is missing because you've turned off all the layers, when you hit go, it will be there ready to work. Uh, it's a great way to stay organized and you're not clustered up when you're trying to work on stuff. You know, if you only wanted to work on the ramp, turn on layer six or you can click this to turn them all on and off. If you know the dimension, or if you know the type of cabinet that this game would emulate, you would go into your table dimensions manager here and find, if you're like, I definitely know this game is going to be a, uh, you know, a, a WMS, like a Williams super pin body, or if it was gonna be a Williams standard body or if it was gonna do a modern Stern game. These are the table size dimensions that you will wanna type in. So if you just click anywhere here, you'll get all the base dimensions of the game. And over here, you'll see table width, table height, glass height. Uh, if we wanted this to be a standard modern Stern, right here, uh, the width would be 952 by 2115. So we would just type that in there and then push everything around accordingly. So if you wanted to start doing graphics for this and you're you're ready to start drawing on it and putting colors and uh, images and graphics and decals everywhere, what you can do is you can export this as a blueprint, pull that into Photoshop, draw over it, and then re-import it. So you would just go to File, Export, Blueprint, then, you know, name it whatever you want. I got test up there. We'll call this test two because we're awesome. Um, don't save it as a solid you just want these lines, it'll say export finished. Then we can come over to Photoshop and we can open up that image we just made. We'll drop it in here. And you will have the drawing of what you just made. And then if you wanted to paint, so, you know, let's, let's just goof on here really quick. So, you know, red circles, here's a cool arrow, there's a smiley face here in the middle, um, there's a sunburst, man, I'm an artist, bro. Little explodey things there. Um, you can, I, I would recommend doing this all on a new layer, you know, swirly swirlies, hearts and the thing, because you just want to use this as a guide so you know where things are, so the ramp. Okay, this looks amazing, right? So let me give this a solid background and we'll export it, export, and we'll just make it, it doesn't matter what it is. All right, it will have the dimensions of what this needs to be. You'll just hit save, we'll call this, obviously I saved this already because I'm hiding stuff from you internet, so we'll save three. Then we'll come back over to Visual Pinball and in here you'll go to image manager import and select your image you just made it's called test three great then click anywhere here 
over here where it says Playfield Graphics, where it says Image, your test three will now show up. And you won't see it here because you have to go to View and turn on Playfield Image and Backdrop. And it didn't take, so let's go test three again. Bump. Now look at that. There's our graphics perfectly lined up. And then when you hit play, well, I'll be, there it is, beautiful. This obviously would be some better artwork that you would create uh, besides this big swirly mess that I had just made. If you don't like the angle that you're seeing, instead of hitting play, and make sure you save before you do this because this can F things up a little bit. But if you hit F6, it will act like it's rendering the table again but the flippers will be disabled, but instead of sh the shift buttons making the game flip, it will alter the angle at which you're looking at the table so you can get a better view of like what's going on. And where you leave this, the angle that you leave this in, it remembers it so that the next time you play, it will be that angle that you just had. Now, inside of there, is a lot of settings that can really sort of muck up your lighting and your physics and stuff like that. That's why I suggest that you save before you go in there and mess with that, just so you don't have to, you know, do a bunch of geometry to figure out how to fix everything that happened. So if you wanted another flipper on here, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, the code already exists, so let's say we wanted another right flipper, we would copy this paste it thing you're awesome here's the flipper that we wanted so let's say we wanted this to be up top here all right so this is our right flipper you could choose the surface that it's on remember it's wall 001 so this is going to be on our upper play field area and you can choose what the the end angle is so you could see here this little line it's showing where the flipper starts where it's going to end and all of that adjusted here the start angle so this could be you know maybe it's gonna be a very tiny flip it's not gonna flip much so right flipper 001 we can call this like upper flipper and just remember this and then we'll go into the code and what I want you to do is go all the way up and find where the right flipper is okay so right flipper rotate to end and what you're gonna do is so that this flipper is also firing at the same time. We're going to paste the upper flipper here as well. Copy this rotate to end. Just literally copy copy pasta. It's so, so easy. So this, in theory, should just have you flipping once you flip the right flipper. So we're going to fire it off. And there you go. So it, it flipped up. We did miss one little part because we have to make it go down. So what we're going to do is find anything labeled right flipper. There it is. Return to start is what we missed. So we're going to grab our upper flipper, ro rotate here, come down, forgot this part, and make sure your formatting looks good. So use your tabs to make sure everything's lined up. It's just going to help you in the end keep a clean code. So. There we go. That right there should have your flipper go up and then fall back down on the upper play field. Boop, 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 boop. You now have an upper play field. Look at that. Zoop. I mean, God, this game is ugly. Well, that's pretty much it. Thank you for checking this out. Hopefully you'll start making some cool stuff. I do recommend that you check out the Orbital Pinball, orbitalpin.com. Some great resources here, especially YouTube videos that elaborate more on what we were talking about. I was just showing you the basics on how to just hit the ground running and make something that shoots and it's fun. And then you can get into more details from there. Uh, there's also a framework that you can download that is a more elaborate version of the example table where there's actually scoring and stuff so you can lean on that code to make some magic happen but yeah i can't wait to see what you all do with this knowledge if you have any other questions please let me know and uh yeah good luck <laughs>